Hey, what's up? It's Mark. And I had a great question come through. Do I work with autoimmune problems? And the answer is absolutely. But I look at autoimmunity a little bit differently. I'm not interested in turning off your immune system. I'm interested in finding the root of why your immune system has targeted these very specific cells for destruction. And if those cells that are targeted and programmed for destruction are things like your knee joint or your skin, or you have a problem with your belly, I want to establish why that happened. Let me explain a little bit about how I do that. So when I see someone with autoimmune problems, I know generally that the inflammation system inside the body is run rampant. It's, it's gone askew because your inflammation system should rise up, but then once it's done of its work, it should rise back down. So it goes, should go up and then it kind of fall back on a nice peak. And that should take anywhere from three or four days for a simple cut or scrape or burn, or it might take a couple of months for those that might be dealing with a chronic like leg break or something along those lines, right? So it could take some various amounts of time. But for some reason, there's this inability for the body to kind of crush down that inflammation. And when that starts to happen, your immune system starts to peg this injury as it's causing me biological harm. Keep fighting it, right? That's what happens. So there's two different systems that are usually at play for this. Number one is there's damage to a certain type of tissue. And that primarily in my practice revolves around your gut. So remember that your belly is this massive tube inside of you that has all kinds of different things being thrown at it every single day. And if you have an imbalance of things, maybe from what you're eating or bacterias or infections living inside of your belly, the raw ingredients that you're using to rebuild your body might not be there to provide this active benefit that you're looking for to resolve inflammation. So let me give you a context. Say, for example, you're eating a lot of gluten and cheese and maybe drinking milk. And you're starting to establish like, I don't quite feel quite so right when these things come inside my body. Those things might not be truly food allergies, but what they're doing is they're causing these food sensitivities. And when food sensitivities start to occur, your body's going to start to call in your immune system to say like, can you get rid of this for me? And if that starts to happen on repeat, every time that food comes inside of your body, now your body's going to mount a response. That's starting to get this antigen this kind of molecule created to say like i hate that guy and get rid of him and that sometimes might be the start of autoimmunity if that starts to happen inside the lining of your belly then you're going to start having inflammation fighting at the source of your uh, intestinal barrier and that's what we call leaky gut and leaky gut is one of the primary reasons why we have this expression of excess food sensitivities happening for those that have autoimmunity and the other way we generally find autoimmunities tends to occur is if we have these problems with you, your body not getting rid of an infection. So say you have Epstein-Barr or you've had mono or you've had uh, herpes zoster or whatever it looks like for you. Sometimes that viral application of that inside of your body can cause this immune system to start spiraling. It uses a different wing of your immune system to do that, but nonetheless, the results are the same. If that virus is living inside of a, a type of tissue and that tissue gets looked at by your immune system and says like, hey, you're not supposed to be here, get, say that's living in your knee, for example, that might be a very easy place for your body to start ramping up inflammation, causing massive pain and causing degradation of your joint because there's something in there that's not supposed to be there. So I think when you look at autoimmunity as a whole, there's a whole list of things that kind of you have to go through to kind of find the root of those problems within, with um, the inflammation cycle as well as the autoimmunity. And remember that autoimmunity doesn't just happen out of the blue. Autoimmunity happens over years, sometimes prolonged exposure to these things before you start developing symptoms. So autoimmunity can be a little bit tricky to kind of to navigate through, which is why sometimes we look at testing. So a great first place to start with someone when you have an autoimmune type problem is first established food is likely going to be 50% of the battle as to why you don't feel good. So sometimes an elimination diet for four or five weeks might be the best thing you can do to kind of get yourself on track and prepared to actually start that healing journey. Taking away those food sensitivities, I call them stop giving yourself paper cuts. That sometimes is the most effective way to get you started on your path to kind of resolving some of this autoimmune problem that you might have. But following that, you want to kind of take it apart a little bit and establish, well, what's actually going on behind the scenes? Do you have problems like heavy metals? Do you have true food sensitivities? Do you have any food allergies? Do you have problems with these toxins living inside of your body causing this issue? You know, are there these burdens in your environment, like things like mold, like things like chronic exposure to something that's a, a chemical? Is there something in your environment causing these issues? And that's when generally we look at testing. 
So ordering some testing to kind of get a good kind of, let's kind of get, get a lay of the land a little bit here while we do the food elimination plan is a really smart place for so many people that have autoimmunity to start. Sometimes the answer is not found in supplements. Sometimes the answer is actually inside the lifestyle and the food first. And I'm very, very well aware that those that have chronic inflammatory problems generally have a lot of chronic pain. And the last thing that you want to do when you have chronic pain every day and you feel like every day is just fighting a battle is start to do something that's hard. So in some of these cases, we have to take it very simply. So sometimes there's a reduction in the amount of that food that you eat. So if you absolutely love sugar and you eat it eight times a day, a good starting point would be to eat it four times per day. Right. Sometimes if you're if you're guzzling back like, you know, two liters of milk in a run of a, a, a day down to one liter, just lowering the burden until we actually start to see the needles start to turn a little bit is the safest way to get started with some people that have this apprehension about kind of solving this autoimmune problems. Right. So what I find in practice with autoimmunity is that it can be quite complicated. There's a lot of different knots to untie below the waterline. Sometimes you can't even see them, which is why testing is so important for that. But what's very interesting, there's usually a way out. There's usually a thing that's kind of bothering your immune system. And when you can do the right stuff to kind of regulate that properly, sometimes that's when the magic happens. So if you're struggling with autoimmunity and want to have a conversation about what indeed it is I can help you with, now is the time. So book an initial free consultation. You can describe to me what you're dealing with. I can give you kind of the lay of the land, what I see as to how we might move forward. And if we have the right, right fit for each other, book a consultation and get started. And if not... That's okay too. So if you have any questions for me, please reach out. I'm happy to help anybody that has any concerns with autoimmunity. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye.